I was uh, in Amsterdam with my girlfriend on vacation a few years back, and we came out of the Van Gogh Museum, and it was getting dark out, and we had no plans. We said, what are we going to do tonight? And by chance, across the street was the Amsterdam Royal Concert Hall. It was a beautiful old landmark venue, and right on the marquee, it said, tonight only, the Amsterdam Symphony with guest vocalist Rufus Wainwright. And I had heard his name. I didn't know much about him. I never saw him before, but I know he was some virtuoso. Well, like, look at this. Specific to tonight and Amsterdam, that's what we're going to do. So we run across the street right before it started, and we bought two tickets. And we're about to go in, and my girlfriend says, "Hun, we're in Amsterdam. Why don't we go smoke a little marijuana before we go in? It'll be that much more fun. Well, okay, but at the time, I didn't smoke marijuana. <laughs> at the time. And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, well, when would there be a more perfect time to do it? And I said, okay, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be a team player. And so she runs across the street and she buys it wherever you buy it. And she runs back over and she hands me a bag. And I take it out and I light it. And I took two of the biggest hits <laughs> I have ever taken in my entire life. And immediately I knew something was very wrong. <laughs> She goes, oh my God, your face is pale white. I said, I know. She said, is there an issue? I said, a big one. She said, what's the matter? I said, I can't feel my arms. She's like, I'm sure you'll be fine. I said, I don't think so. She said, why? I said, because it is progressing. And I can't feel my legs. And then she's staring back at me blankly. And I was like, I need those. She said, hon, calm down, you're just high. I said, no, I've been high before in my life. This does not feel like that. I'm telling you, believe me, something's very wrong. And I looked down at the baggie that I was holding and it said heroin. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding though. <laughs> so, but it did say hash and I don't know what that is, but I smoked that shit. <laughs> I smoke so much hash, I don't even know what it is. I know what a hash brown is, but it wasn't a hash brown because it was after 11 a.m. She said, I think we should go inside. I said, really? I think we should book a flight and fly home tonight. She said, no, why don't we go inside? I said, I don't think this is a good idea any longer. I am very unsettled. She said, hon, you're with me, okay? I'll make sure you're okay, you're just high, I'll take care of you, I promise. Let's go inside. And then she took my hand like she was my sponsor. <laughs> and she led me in and I was just... <laughs> no control over any of these, right? We get inside, we're in a vestibule, they're handing out hot wine in there, hot wine. I never heard of hot wine before. I slammed two. <laughs> slammed two. She's not looking out for me, this woman. <laughs> 10 feet away is the door to the actual theater. We walk in there, I look up, I go, oh, we made a mistake. It is gorgeous in there. There is crystal chandeliers, everything is gold leaves, the seats were velvet. It was 1,700 seats. Everybody in there was in a tux and a gown. <laughs> Your boy was in shorts, <laughs> flip-flops, and a fanny pack. I was a tourist that day, you know? And I was like, I can't do this, I'm mortified. And she was like, babe, uh, when the lights go down and we're sitting in our seats, nobody's gonna notice. I think we should go sit down. And I said, really? Because I think we should book a flight and fly home tonight. <laughs> and I just take her hand and I go to my seat and I'm like, excuse, excuse, excuse. And I get to my seat and I turn and the second my ass hit the velvet, I went, we need to leave now. <laughs> I want to explain something to you guys. This is hands down the scariest, worst experience of my entire life. No, nothing was funny about it. It was, it, it, I have trauma from this, okay? <laughs> the only way I could explain to you how I felt was that I felt like I was having a million thoughts at a time. I couldn't process any of it. I didn't understand what was real or not. And I felt like I was going crazy and drowning and suffocating in my own thoughts. So laugh it up. <laughs> And you just understand this, every single thing that I said to my girlfriend, in my heart of hearts, I believed. So I turned to her and I said, we need to leave now. And she said, why? And I said, 
because everybody in here is trying to kill me. <laughs> she said, huh? I said, everybody in here wants me dead. <laughs> she starts laughing. Do you know how infuriating it is <laughs> when you think that 1,700 people are targeting you and the one person you're with is having a chuckle? I was like, why are you laughing? She said, because it's funny. I said, it's funny. I said, you know what? I'm telling you, it's a courtesy. In a couple of seconds, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to scream at the top of my peak physical ability, and I am going to run away, okay? I'm telling you as a courtesy. I kept saying that to her over and over. I'm telling you as a courtesy. Like, I'm some great guy. She goes, you're not going to do that. I go, yes, I am. And I'll tell you another thing. A woman in a wheelchair has situated herself in the aisle we just came down. She's blocking it. And I'm not going to die. So if I have to get past her and I can't, something may happen between me and her. She said, what? I said, well, it's either her or me. She said, no, it's not. You're not going to touch that woman. I said, yes, I am. And I leaned in for dramatic effect, I guess, and I went, and I've already made peace with it. <laughs> yeah. And in that moment, the lights went down, the symphony came out with Rufus, and they started the concert, and I was stuck there, okay? And I don't know if you've ever heard him sing before. This was my first time hearing him. His voice was otherworldly. It was, it was like angelic. It really was something special that I hadn't heard before. And so immediately I started, you know, to cry hard. <laughs> and as I'm crying, I feel my throat start to close up. It starts to constrict, it's getting very coarse, and it started to hurt, and I couldn't swallow. My tongue felt like sandpaper. It was really scary. I, like, had no moisture in my inside. <laughs> and I turned to her, and I went, they, they poisoned me. <laughs> she said, what? I said, they poisoned me. She's like, who do you think poisoned you? I said, these people. <laughs> She said, how do you think these people poisoned you? I said, the hot wine. <laughs> she said, babe, I had the hot wine. I said, <gasps> <laughs> you're next. <laughs> I was processing real grief. She said, babe, you, you probably have dry mouth. Why don't you go in your fanny pack and get yourself a Ricola? I carry them. So I looked down at my fanny pack, which a moment ago was at my feet, and I gotta tell you, Chicago, <laughs> my fanny pack was probably 650 feet down, okay? I'm just staring at it for a minute. It's like, how am I supposed to get down there? I'm only a man. This is a 10 to 15 man job with a ladder. And it took minutes, but I, I finally was like, I have an idea, I'll reach. And I threw my hand down, and I watched my arm extend 650 feet. Took 11 minutes. I was watching the concert like this. <laughs> Finally, I get down there, I grasp it. Now I gotta come back up double the time. I get the fanny pack up here, I take out a Ricola, it's individually wrapped. This poses another problem. I'm holding the thing right here, looking at it. I'm like, how am I supposed to penetrate this military grade wrapper? I'm dying, I need this lemon laws. After minutes, I go, you know what, though? You know what? In order to unwrap it, I'm going to have to unwrap it. <laughs> and I go to unwrap it, and it sounds like this. It goes, and I was like, <gasps> because I have to keep a low profile. Because 1,700 people want to kill me. And I freaked out. I'm like, there's, there's no way this could have came from my recall of rap. And I'm looking around, and no one's really looking at me. And so I'm like, I got to do this again, because the poison is, I'm almost a goner. So I go to unwrap it again slowly, and I'm like, and it went, Shh. 
And I went, oh, everybody mad? And my girlfriend said, what? I said, everybody here mad? She said, what are you talking about? Why? I said, on account of my Ricola. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. And in that moment, from the stage, Rufus Wainwright finished singing uh, his first song. <laughs> so it's been about four minutes. And, uh, and he addresses the audience for the very first time with his non-singing voice. And he goes like this. Hello, Amsterdam! And I was like, what is going on? His, his singing voice didn't match his regular voice. And I did not have the mental capacity or fortitude to understand that in that moment. And I freaked out. I turned to the old man next to me, had white hair, a blue tux. I went, oh, is he gay? <laughs> He is gay. He's a famous out gay man. Everybody in the theater knew that, but me, the old man, knew it. And so he shot me a look like I was a lunatic, and it freaked me out. I went, what? What? Am I gay? <laughs> I asked the old man if I was gay. And I know, I know. Some of you are like, you didn't ask him if you were gay. Yes, I fucking did. <laughs> I smoked hash. <laughs> I promise you, Chicago, in that moment, I did not know who gay. <laughs> and as I'm asking him, in my head, I look to the stage, and R Rufus Wainwright went, Ricola. <laughs> and I turned to my girlfriend, and I go, that must be a code word, we have to leave now. And she's like, it's the first song, I'm not leaving. And I was like, I will always love you. Skews, 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 skews. And I get to the aisle and I see that woman in the wheelchair and I start running to her and I know I'm not gonna get past her. So right before I magically pumped the brakes, I went, move! And she went, huh! And I went, ha! Huh! And then I threw my Ricola at her. I hit her right off the left tit. I hit her right off the left tip with a Ricola. I hit the woman in the wheelchair right off the LT with the R. I burst through the doors of the theater. I'm outside hyperventilating. I'm like, <sighs> 30 seconds later, my girlfriend comes out. I said, take me to the hospital. She said, calm down. I said, no, I told you I was very unsettled. <laughs> She said, "Hun, calm down. Take this water and drink it. Let the cold air hit your face for two minutes. If you still feel this way in two minutes, I promise you, it's on me, and I will take you to the hospital, okay? And I said, fine. <laughs> she said, why don't you go in your fanny pack and get yourself a Ricola? <laughs> I carry them. <laughs> so I go in my fanny pack to get a Ricola, and there was none. There never was. What was in my fanny pack? Little totes umbrella, a couple of room keys, and condoms. Fine, Chicago, fine. <laughs> but you all understand that this means that odds are high that I threw a condom at the woman in the wheelchair. I was feverishly trying to open a condom during this man's performance while asking the old man next to me, sir, who is gay? Am I gay? Is he gay? I need to know right away, who is gay? Three. 